Hello, everyone. This is Chris Bachman, the director of the ECST Makerspace and instructor for uh, Intro to Mechanical Design at Cal State LA. And this is a short video about how to add some of the small, uh, small components to your design. Here's one example that we make um, in our Intro to Mechanical Design course. Um, it's a flashlight that has uh, several screws, um, as well as a set screw, light bulb, battery, and O-ring. Um, so you might have designed and made all of your different components, but you know there's a lot of these standard components that you don't necessarily want to make from scratch. So how about you add those in to your assemblies in SolidWorks? So one of the kind of the quickest options is the smart fasteners option in SolidWorks. So it lets you choose a face and it identifies if there's any thread that you put in with a hole wizard. And you can add that. And it automatically will pick a type of fastener um, to go there. And you can add things like washers into this fasteners, etc. And so this is good, especially if you have maybe a flange with a lot of fasteners, you can quickly add them all in there. Um, the downside is it's always going to put the one type of fastener that you have set for that type of thread. So inside the design library, starting which starts hidden over here, you can pull this out, and there's an option to edit your toolbox. So your toolbox has different settings, so it has hardware you can change, um, but it also has definitions for your hole wizard. So if you come into your ANSI inch, and maybe you're, you have your tapped holes, um, and you might have your bottoming or just your regular tapped holes, you can come in and you can reassign uh, different types of screws for these different types of holes. So that's how you kind of change the default. Um, I personally don't use that as much as loading in the type of component that I want. So once you come into your design library um, inside your toolbox, sometimes you just have to hit add in at the start. You can come to the ANSI inch. I might want to add something like a bolt and screw. In this case, I want that little kind of pan head screw with the Phillips head. So that's just a little machine screw. And I have my pan cross head, so that's my Phillips. And so this option here, when I right click, you can either choose to insert into the assembly or to create the part. So if you choose to insert it into the assembly, it'll give you some different options here in terms of both that number associated with the outer diameter or if it's a larger size, right? It'll give you the outer diameter in inches. Uh, the number of threads per inch. This is the length uh, of the fastener underneath the underneath the head. So that's from the bottom side of the head to the end. And how long is the thread? Um, for you know smaller fasteners, usually those are the same. But if you get longer fasteners, they might be bigger. So you can add these components kind of quickly into there and begin to mate them. Um, another way you can do this is you can go to the same thing and you can hit create part. So this is actually Going to give you a similar option um, for you to kind of select kind of exactly what type of fastener you want. Once you check, you'll notice here it's not going to show up. We don't have another one. So the reason for that is it's actually made a part that you can now save. And once you save that in a known location, right, you can insert that component into your assembly. Um, so those that's uh, one of the faster ways that I like to do it. Um, the third way, and potentially if this is not, uh, potentially if your fastener or you can see some of the other types of things that they have in here is not available, you might go and find, try and find those fasteners online, for example. So McMaster here is one good option for easily kind of selecting with lots of images the type of thing that you might want, right? Um, so for example, I had known this part number, I would looked it up previously. And um, once you actually select your final, the final, all the details about it, it goes into this uh, area where you have a, down at the bottom of the page, goes into a drawing of it. Uh, in addition, it will have an option to save the SolidWorks part file. So you, they'll actually let you download this, download this part file, save this in a known location. All right, so maybe I'll just put this on my desktop. Right, so it's an older version of Solid, SolidWorks that it was made in. Come back to my assembly. Can insert the component inside of here, right? And so you can see some of the differences. You know, this one 
they still left some of the um, some of the sketch lines on there. So we got a little bit more detail. Um, so you could choose these different two options for the fastener that you want. So um, some other areas that you might um, you might be interested in is, for example, like the battery. So the battery you know, might not be able to actually find it uh, the CAD model inside McMaster. So there's other stuff like GrabCAD, which is basically a database of CAD models of things that people have already created. Um, so you can create a free account here and you can come and download uh, the different uh, batteries um, that you think might work and integrate them you know, if you didn't want to make them yourself. Um, so the other option, which is another kind of common thing, is like, let's say this light bulb. So I found it and I bought it off of McMaster, but it doesn't have the option for the CAD model in this case. Well, maybe I don't need actually all the details of it. And what I really care about is the outer diameter and the length only. So sometimes I'll just make a representative part without all of the detail. Um, so for example, so maybe I was going to make this, I would just kind of quickly make something that would allow me to try and place this inside. So maybe what I'll do is I'll sketch top plane. The outer diameter, which I saw from the specifications was 0.41 inches. Maybe I'll even add a little, the tiniest bit of frill to it and I'll make it, I'll make kind of the, I have the bottom portion of it as well. And I'll convert the entities of that to give me that circle on a separate sketch and I'll extrude it the next half. So maybe this is maybe the light, the light bulb portion of it. Right, and maybe I want that to be obvious. So, um, oops, should go back one step. So when you go into this and you extrude it, almost forgot something here. You saw how that case, it made it one solid object. What you actually want to do is not merge the results. And so that'll create two separate bodies for you. And so what it does there is now you have this body that you can, you know, let's say you maybe want this to represent the, represent the light bulb. So I don't know, yellow kind of represents light for me. And I can save this part as my light bulb. And it has all of the dimensions that I actually care about. So that when I come into SolidWorks, I can now insert this light bulb inside of here. And I can begin to mate um, some of the parts uh, inside of inside of SolidWorks. So if you can't get what you quite want to select, you can um, you can always uh, hold shift or begin to begin to rotate things rotate things around to try and find a you know an edge that you want. Here we could begin to kind of begin to look at, you know, how well, how would this light bulb begin to fit in here, right? And so maybe, maybe this is a, you know, a little bit too, a little bit too high in this case, right? And so we might want to begin to kind of um, begin to kind of move it around, see, see if there's a better, better spot for it in this case, so it doesn't interfere, interfere with the glass. Um, this isn't really a video on, on mating, so I'm not going to go into it too much. But anyways, you can see how here's some different options for, um, for bringing in some small parts into, into your assembly and beginning to use them to see how things go together. Um, all right. Uh, thanks for watching.